session of the fall conference, you're in the right group. Hello, my name is Joni Perry, and I am the Division Director for the Community Finance Division at DCA, and I'll serve as your moderator this afternoon. Um, before we get started, there are a few uh, housekeeping uh, tips I wanted to um, mention to you. If you can keep your um, computer on mute or phone on mute, that will keep any background noise out. And we do uh, want to save our questions for the end of the session, and then um, we'll be glad to uh, take any questions you have. Uh, we will be recording this session, so if you want to go back later and see it again, or if you um, have friends that weren't able to get on, we would encourage you all to get back on. And also, uh, we will be doing an evaluation of the session, so please offer comments. We take these seriously and help build our conferences in the future on these. But now for the fun part. Um, in keeping with the uh, conference theme of collaboration, partnership, and planning, this session will highlight the City of LaGrange's recently awarded CDBG Innovative Grant. As a little background, if you aren't familiar with CDBG, it, it is the federal cornerstone program for states to address economic and community development needs of towns and rural areas. It's also the most flexible source of federal assistance to address a wide range of community development needs that stabilize and grow communities. Georgia's non-entitlement local governments, which is basically your non-urban cities and counties, have used CDBG for a variety of traditional infrastructure activities, including roads, bridges, drinking water, sewer, streets and sidewalks, et cetera. Um, the purpose of the innovative grant program is to encourage projects that will result in transformational changes. Commissioner Nunn challenged the CDBG staff a couple of years ago to come up with some way to encourage our communities to pick those projects up that would have real impact on the community for many years to come. The innovative grant set aside is a result of that. Um, we, we describe transformational as an individual or series of activities that would support long-term and sustainable change. We felt like that was broad enough to allow our government in defining what could be transformational. And if we were going to encourage our communities to reach out, we needed to step forward to so we created a set aside and put aside uh, grants of up to $2 million. And the city of LaGrange was the sole recipient of last year's funding. Their innovative grant was, uh, was $2 million for the redevelopment of the Whitesville Road Corridor. The department was happy to award this grant to a community with vision and planning collaboration and strong local partnership between the city, the public housing authority, the Troop County school system, and the private business sector. These aren't easy projects to do, so we go in and acknowledge that right off. Uh, our panel today to discuss LaGrange's Innovative Grant is Mayor Jim Thornton, as well as representatives from the Housing Authority, the Troop County School System, a local business owner whose business is actually located on the corridor, and the City of LaGrange's Community Development Department. Each of the panelists represents an integral part of the city's strategy. While LaGrange's project may not fit your community's needs, we hope by showcasing their efforts, collaboration, and partnerships, this will provide you all a new and broader view of opportunities that the CDBG program can provide. It's my pleasure to introduce the mayor and panel. Mayor Jim Thornton is serving as the 42nd mayor of LaGrange. After serving one term on city council, Jim is now serving his second term as mayor. 
Mayor Thornton was born, raised, and educated in the Grange. After graduating from the Grange College, Jim attended Emory University Law School and afterwards returned to LaGrange and has been practicing law for 23 years. He's currently a partner with the law firm of Thornton and Graham, where he specializes in real estate transactions, estate planning, and corporate law. In addition to his elected leadership role, the mayor has a long and distinguished record of community service, civic, and church volunteer service as well. Mr. Chad Cooper is the Director of Development and Marketing at LaGrange Housing Authority. Chad was also born and raised in LaGrange, not too far from our target area. Chad attended Auburn University with a bachelor's in sociology and a master's in education. Mr. Cooper is an innovative leader with more than 10 years of experience in community development, cross-functional team leadership, diversity, and inclusion. Chad also has a track record of establishing partnerships with nonprofit organizations and businesses. Mr. Dale Jackson is our private sector business owner. He, Dale was also born and raised in LaGrange and is the co-owner of Jackson Services. Jackson Services has been in business since 1973 and is and is one of the top 15 top trained heating and air conditioning contractors in the country. Over the last three years, Dale has worked with the Troop County School System to establish a HVAC slash construction pathway. He's also worked with Dr. Rule at West Georgia Technical College to change the way technical colleges in Georgia approach training for the trade industry. He's also worked with the Grange Housing Authority to bring solar technology to the authority and to change the perception of affordable housing in Georgia. Dr. Brian Shoemake has led the Truth County School System since 2019. Welcome to LaGrange and Truth County, Dr. Shoemake. I'm a native from LaGrange, so this is an honor. Upon his arrival in Truth County, Dr. Shoemake evaluated the school system and set forth a vision for it to become a place for every kid, where students find connections, meaning, and understanding with their daily school experience, teachers, and peers. He believes every student should be affiliated and known for their strengths, aptitudes, and interests of their school experiences, meaning, and relevance. Prior to his arrival in Troop County, Dr. Shoemake served as a superintendent in Medford, Oregon, and he also served as a regional assistant superintendent for the Jefferson County Public School System in Louisville, Kentucky. Dr. Shoemake received a PhD in educational administration from the University of Louisville and also served in a variety of leadership roles in professional and civic organizations. Alton West, not least is, is, the, is the glue of this project. And he, like the mayor, Chad and Dale, are all natives of LaGrange. After graduating from Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, I know there's another college over there, with a BA in business administration, he returned to LaGrange. He served the community in several roles, first with LaGrange Police Department, and while there he got his master's degree from and Justice Administration from Columbus College. Following his service with the police department, he transitioned to City Hall for a few years and then was tapped to run the nonprofit neighborhood housing services of LaGrange. And it was this in this role where Alton became familiar with the CDBG and CHIP program. Under his leadership, NSF, the neighborhood housing uh, services was able to transform several in town neighborhood. During his tenure, they were able to offer to invest $2 million of loans and finances to assist low mod citizens in LaGrange area to become homeowners. After this stint, Alton returned to City Hall as the Community Development Director. This role allows Alton to carry out his passion to make a difference in the community where he grew up, especially in the area where it was only a few blocks away. Like the other panelists, Alton serves on several community volunteer boards. So that is your uh, panel today. And at this point, I will turn it over to, to Mayor Thornton. 
Thank you. Well, thank you, Joni, and thank you for putting together this panel discussion. But I'd like to begin by thanking you and Commissioner Nunn and all of the members of the board and staff at DCA for the confidence that you have shown in the city of LaGrange by, um, by making this innovative award to our community. Although we are just in the very beginning stages of it, and we're going to talk today mostly about the planning aspects of it, I'm very excited about this project. I think it has a, a really good opportunity to transform a corridor, to improve the lives of a lot of our residents in the community. And that's at the, at the end of the day, that's what the CDBG money is designed to do. So thank you again for, uh, for your support. I, I was excited about this project or, or about this grant opportunity uh, because it brought together several things that I think are really important for all of our local communities, but especially for LaGrange. And that is the opportunity to be creative to think big picture, to be innovative, to try new things, um, but also to intentionally bring together partners because this is not something that uh, we wanted to just do from City Hall. This is something that we wanted to bring together the entire community and get the entire community to rally behind because that's how big transformative projects happen. I like to say not all good ideas start at City Hall. In fact, most I good ideas don't start at City Hall, but we can sometimes <laughs> We can sometimes facilitate um, and bring together those good ideas and put them into practice and channel those resources. And that's what happened in this case. Like, like every community across Georgia, LaGrange needs more affordable housing. We need more high quality, affordable housing for our residents. Like every community across the state, we have workforce challenges. We're constantly looking for opportunities to train our residents for the, the new jobs that are emerging, new technologies, sometimes old technologies that are just in high demand. And, and then we also, uh, like every community, have gateway corridors. And this, um, this project today is go that we're talking about is focused on one of our three main gateway corridors. We have three interstate interchanges off of I-85, and one of them is the Whitesville Street uh, corridor. Um, for those of you who have attended the DCA conference in the past at Great Wolf Lodge, Whitesville Street is the road that connects Great Wolf Lodge into downtown LaGrange. So you may have had an opportunity to travel uh, on this corridor. But what we were able to do in applying for the CDBG grant, you're going to hear about it from the, the people who were actually intimately involved in the planning, is bringing together these different silos into one project. So we're bringing... Um, affordable housing, workforce training, and corridor beautification into one, into one package. Um, I'm very excited about it. I think that uh, by providing a permanent job training location, that's going to have a lasting effect on uh, job opportunities for our residents. By renovating housing that will become uh, operated by the LaGrange Housing Authority, that's going to provide housing opportunities. And it fits in with something that the mayor and council did about three years ago when we identified what gateway plans did we need? How could we improve the gateway corridors into our community? How could we beautify them? How we could make them more inviting? And at the same time, how could we um, maintain the, the businesses and the residents that were on those corridors? So, so that planning went into place um, through the city. And when we started reaching out as part of this innovative grant, talking to the business community, the school system, the housing authority, which you're going to hear from today. We realized that we all shared the same goals and they all came together in this one, in this one project. We have put together as way of introduction a video um, and I appreciate the, the LG TV staff here at our, our local uh, TV station. They put together a video for us to showcase what I'm talking about, the Whitesville Corridor, the, um, the locations that we're talking about renovating. And I believe you have that. And I, at this time, I'd like to play that video and then um, hear from our other panelists. So Thank we're you. going to move into a breakout to watch this video. If it does not start automatically for you, please click play. At the end of the video, we'll move back into the main session and we'll continue the presentation at that time.
The City of LaGrange is proud to work with our community partners to help develop an area in Southeast LaGrange that has been neglected for decades. Thanks to a $2 million CDBG grant from the Department of Community Affairs, the city is now focusing its efforts on a major redevelopment project along the White's Road corridor that will include not only investing in the aesthetics of the community, but also investing in our people through educational opportunities that will be easily accessible to residents in search of much needed careers in our community. In 2016, the city of LaGrange contracted with Perkins and Will Architects to help develop the city's 2016 Gateway Corridor Plan. in this area. With so much investment and synergy in the community, the city came up with an idea that would not only focus on aesthetics, but with the help of the DCA Innovative Grant, create a way to invest in people with community partnerships. This plan would have several moving parts. This commercial building in the 1100 block of Weissel Road has been vacant for decades. The plan is to renovate this building and use it to help address the community needs. Skilled labor in the fields of HVAC, plumbing, electrical, and masonry. These trade skills are not currently offered at the local technical college, but certification in these areas will provide a solid career. This vacant commercial building will be used as a workforce development center. Seven nearby residential homes will be reconstructed and rehabilitated to be used for training on the job. City staff reached out to the nonprofit sector business owners and school leaders to collaborate in creating this plan. Jackson Heating and Air, the LaGrange Housing Authority, West Georgia Technical College, and the Truth County School System have all committed to the goal of addressing working collaborative We're back in the main session. Okay, well, thank, thank you. And at this time, I would like to uh, hear from Chad Cooper with the LaGrange Housing Authority. Thank you, Jim. Um, my name is Chad Cooper. I'm the Director of Development and Marketing for the LaGrange Housing Authority. Um, back in 2017 is actually when we started our plans to help um, develop the Weiss World Corridor. Um, since we sit right in the middle between the Great Wolf Lodge and the development that's going down there and downtown, we knew we had to do something along with our, not just build housing, but to provide other services in the area. So we came up with a plan with all our directors um, to come up with something for like right across the street that would have different businesses that would be there from coffee shops, doctor's offices, pretty much a lot of different things that you would see in, in pretty much any other neighborhood. But we wanted to make it where people can able to walk to these particular places. And with providing these different businesses that may be there, they will actually be able to actually, the community actually be able to work there as well. And so with that being said, it was, it was almost a great fit, you know, when the innovation grant came up because we already had the plans and the designs for things that we wanted to do. So it was almost just like the perfect, perfect storm for us to get, you know, be a part of this um, team. Well, thank you, Chad. And now let, let's go to uh, Dale Jackson with Jackson Services. Uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Chad. Um, 
It was actually part of my relationship uh, with Chad and the housing authority that myself and my company was brought into this discussion. I think it's, it's amazing when you, you sit, take a step back and the, the two main things you want to talk about is innovative and collaborative. And I think you couldn't have had a better project that proved both of those to be true. Uh, first of all, we're dealing with a very innovative way of training. And that was part of the, when I originally was brought into the discussion, it was primarily because I own uh, a piece of property uh, just right over the hill from where this particular piece of property was. And so uh, Alton and others from the city wanted us to reach out and be collaborative. So they brought in myself as, as kind of part of the private business aspect of this conversation. It was at that point that we got deeper into the conversation. They kind of explained to me what their ideas were. And this original idea started with mainly focusing on uh, teaching and training adult education. You know, those 25 to 45 years old, uh, teaching them a new trade to uh, get them off of government assistance and also t teach them a trade and, and improve housing in the process. Uh, it was then when the deeper we got in this conversation and I explained to Alton and, and Chad and others on the team that I'd already been having this conversation with Dr. Rule at West Georgia Technical College uh, and the, the Technical College System of Georgia, in addition to the, the local high school uh, True County School System, we had started the um, construction and HVAC pathway at Callaway High School. Um, the only problem with the way West Georgia Tech was teaching these trades and um, the way that the, the general public education was, was teaching them as well is there was, it was mostly in the, in the classroom teaching. And as a, a heating and air professional, as an owner, we continuously saw over and over again that students were leaving West Georgia Tech or any technical college system uh, school or even the high school and they, they thought they wanted to get into the trades whether it be plumbing or heating and air or welding the problem was once they left the classroom and that lab environment they, they really were faced with situations that they didn't they weren't prepared for um, it's one thing to learn how to repair a heating and air system in inside of a classroom when it's 72 degrees but when you then transfer that try to transfer that knowledge to an attic that's 137 degrees or in a crawl space that it has got you know creepy crawly things and uh sewage potentially uh, it was it was really sad that we saw people that had invested two years of their life learning in a classroom and after two hours in the field just realized it wasn't for them so that's the conversation i'd been having with the technical college um, was we have to find a way to get these individuals into the field way beyond their two-year degree. And that's what we reaching out to the high school. So we, what we wanted to do with this particular training center is go beyond just focusing on the 33-year-old the looking for a new trade. They can, they're still going to be a focus of this project, but now also how can we use this facility to bring in potentially all three high schools? Because now we're, we'll have a centrally located um, training lab with houses nearby. Now, th there's a lot of those details still to be worked out, and, and Dr. Shoemate with the school system will possibly talk about that. But then we're also looking for the technical college system to still have their lab at West Georgia Tech, but then have the access to get their students out of the lab. Um, kind of, I'm trying to think of the term to use, um, um, but just to basically get them out in the field and let them experience it firsthand so that they can very quickly pivot. And if that's not something for them, they can, they can go to another particular profession. So Dale, that's a great segue to uh, Dr. Shumay with the school system. Thank you, Mayor Thornton and uh, members of the panel. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and to be a part of this conference. Uh, my name is Brian Shumay. I'm the superintendent of Troop County Schools. Uh, we have about 12,000 kids in our school district and 17 regular comprehensive schools in three uh, alternative settings, one of which is a career center. Um, I'm in my 34th year in education, but relatively new to Troop County. And um, as Dale mentioned, we have three high schools, one of which was Callaway, where we have installed a, uh, along with Dale's help, uh, a construction pathway along with heating and air. And when I heard about this, uh, this idea of downtown redevelopment and making a hands-on learning lab, literally in a one block um, 
area along Whitesville Road. And Whitesville Road is very centrally located to all three of our high schools so that other kids from the other two high schools could have access to it. So while it began with an idea about the adult ed, we know there's a need for, for technical training in the mechanical trades, heating and air, electri electrical, plumbing, and, and masonry. And uh, I have a lot of experience with that in my background and uh, being an administrator over such programs and realize the power in getting, getting folks technically trained so they can go out and make a really good living. And this community needs those folks. Um, I know they do in, their, in that industry. So when they approached me about being a partner in this, I really believe Troop County is a, a very diverse uh, school system. We're about 40, 45% uh, white, 45% African-American, 10% other uh, races and nationalities, and quite a bit of poverty and so forth. But but we want every kid to find their, their place. And I think this is adding yet another set of pathways that the kids can pursue. I'm also interested under our career center of adult, offering adult ed. So we, we envision our commitment to this project to be be you know providing instructors to teach in that in those buildings that you that you uh, that you saw on the video and to to work alongside the the people in the profession as well as the city of Lagrange to to locate not only high school kids but but young adults who are interested in going back to school to get that kind of uh, education. I envision us becoming a, a much more uh, far-reaching school district than just K-12 and really entering into the adult ed world so that we can help people get GEDs or to get credit recovery and go back and get high school diplomas, move on to Georgia, uh, West Georgia Tech and or a four-year institution or whatever they may uh, choose to pursue. So we're, we're really excited to become a partner in this. And I, I believe that the Troop County Schools, while we have three cities in, in Troop County, LaGrange being the largest, uh, and then the Troop County government, I think the Troop County School System is, is really the big overarching fabric that touches every element of this entire county. And we want to be, so when you talk about partnership and collaboration and innovation, uh, I'm all about it and I appreciate being uh, brought to the table to, to assist and we look forward to getting kids into this program and really supporting it. Well, thank you, Brian. And so, Joni, what you're, what you're seeing is that uh, some of the things I mentioned, we have the Housing Authority is working on housing, particularly in the Whitesville Road Corridor and the business community represented with Jackson Services is interested in job training opportunities, the school system recognizes that part of their mission is to, to fill that void. Uh, and the city, uh, the mayor and council are interested in revitalizing that corridor. So what this all kind of was coming together at the same time. And so as sometimes these things happen, we turned it over to Alton West and said, <laughs> Alton, go do something, uh, make something happen with this. Uh, but but seriously, we, we look to our staff, we look to our city manager and and, our, and, and Alton is our community development director and say, you know, this, these, are, these are issues, this is an area of concern, um, what are some opportunities? And then Alton went to work. And uh, so I'd like to, to go to Alton next and let him tell you a little bit more about the details of the project. Thank you, Mayor Thornton. And I want to say uh, thanks for the panel members coming on. Makes my job a lot easier, but it also makes my job a lot tougher going last, too. But um, um, I am Alton West, the Community Development Director for the City of LaGrange. Been in this capacity now for about 10 years. And LaGrange is my home. Uh, graduated here from the Troop County School System, Dr. Shumay. Moved away for a period, brief period of time and then moved back. And to be able to make an impact in the community that you grew up in to me is vitally, vitally important. And to have moved away and then come back and you see some of the things that have changed and then you see some of the things that haven't changed and you ask yourself why? Why has that not changed? And why have there not been any reinvestment in, in this community? Or you know, why have people are still living in conditions that you saw them living in previously? <clears throat> And you can ask yourself a number of questions, but when I heard about the Innovative Grant, there were a number of things that went through my head. I, I reminisce back to when I was in high school, and I remember how uh, Mr. Neal, who taught shop, uh, I remember how we had FHA, Future Homemakers, Future Homemakers of America, Future Farmers of America, and a lot of those things were no longer in place to kind of give people or give the students the hands-on skills that they needed. I think we were transitioning more and trying to get people into college and you know, not knocking college, but I also feel like there needs to be an avenue, as you already heard alluded to, that gives our student body an alternative. They're not willing or ready to go off to college. So when the Innovative Grant came out, I went, oh my God, you know, this is something that I feel like we really and truly need to go for. And it's been about a year long process. So I just want to say all that to say this to those communities maybe that may be interested in going after community uh, Innovative Grant, don't be afraid. 
don't be afraid to 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 jump in the water uh, all the way up to your neck. Okay, go ahead and launch yourself <laughs> out there. You just may never know what happened. Um, and then don't be afraid to use the resources in your community. As you see on this panel, we have resources here. We got the LaGrange Housing Authority. We got the school system. We got Jackson Services. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask people. And by all means, you got to communicate. Because as you already heard alluded to, there are various things that are already in motion that we just didn't know about. But once we started communicating, then the puzzle came together. You know, the, the private sector the school system, the housing authority, all those things came together. And then by us all coming together, we're like, wait a minute, I'm doing this over here and you're doing that. Hey, the puzzle, again, is all coming together. Partnerships, collaborations is so important. And again, I also exercise your patience because as you know, when you're a non-entitlement city, you are competing with other cities of your size or even larger. And don't Get discouraged. Continue to stay in the fight. Continue to put your, your information out there. Make sure that you have the support of your mayor and council. That is vitally important. Um, and it will come your way as well. Um, as you already heard, we're talking about doing a workforce development center, which I felt is so vitally important. Um, being the community development director for the city of Grange, I would constantly hear contractors come in and say, I just can't find those skilled laborers anymore, plumbing, electrical, carpentry, those various skill sets. And, and, and I got to thinking about it. And when I, you know, we got the uh, Innovative Grant Award uh, paperwork, I said, well, here's an area that we can address and we can create that sustainable change that will have that long-term lasting effect as they talked about. It's also going to be talking about, you know, helping people to come out of a self-deficiency to move toward, a, I mean, a dependency state to a self-sufficiency state. So I would just say, don't be afraid, communicate with your community partners, and, and by all means, communicate, communicate, communicate. And so um, just one last one last thing before we I go to Joni to see what questions there might be. Um, but Alton, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, through this grant, the the Workforce Training Center will be located there on Whitesville. Um, we'll have a permanent location for the job training. And those on the job training, uh, that on the job training, part of that's going to be laboratory work in houses along the corridor as well. And I think is there seven seven houses that will be um, renovated as part of this uh, particular first first phase of the project? Yes, sir. What we plan to do, as, as you saw from the video, we do have a commercial building that we'll be converting into the Workforce Development Center itself. And then because you want to do a couple of things, you want to do an economic impact as well as elimination of blight. So there's seven homes, uh, five on Butler Street, there's two on Bagley Street, all owned by the same owner that we plan to uh, purchase those homes. And once the uh, Workforce uh, Development Center is up, we want students to be able not only to get hands-on training there in the Workforce Development Center, but we want them to be able to go across the street because the homes are all located right across the street and get hands-on experience working alongside contractors in those various fields so to not only get the hands-on there in the lab, but also seeing how those things actually come together there in the field. So we're very excited about that uh, component of it, uh, not only the workforce, but the on-the-job training. Uh, as you heard alluded to a moment ago uh, by Dale, you know, the classroom instruction is great. We're not taking anything away from it, but every time you go somewhere, they want to know how much experience do you have. So I think that experience of on-the-job training is going to be vitally, vitally important. So Joni, house, housing will be improved in the corridor. Uh, job training opportunity will be permanently located on the corridor. We're seeing other activity through these various entities taking place along along Whitesville. And so as you saw in the video, I really think this is going to be a transformative project and, and uh, very excited about it. Look forward to being able to uh, share the results at uh, future future DCA mm -hmm. conferences. But uh, like you say, we're, we're, we're just in the very beginning stages now and COVID has, slow, has even slowed that down a little bit from where we hope to be at this point. But, um, but we, we, are, we are moving forward. And that, that concludes our formal presentation. And I'll see if you have any questions. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, you all were able to tell the story so much better than any of us up in Atlanta could. And um, I will say from the state's perspective, uh, what struck us was that you had a community that had gone through a planning. They had identified their needs once they had realized um, and carried, and then they came up with a plan to carry it out. 
And these projects, as I said on the intro, we recognize that they aren't easy to do, but we want to put um, money out there. If we say we're going to uh, encourage collaboration and partnerships, we feel like we owe it to you all to help finance that. I believe the commissioner now is going to be very interested in having another round of innovative, so I hope you all are taking notes. What you've just heard from LaGrange is very unique to LaGrange, and everyone, I think, all the local governments that are probably on this call. Also, I hope this will give you a chance to go back and start looking at your community and see what one of your sister cities has done. I'm going to try to go back and find if we have any questions. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so I will carry it for a minute. What do you think was the hardest part of getting everybody together? Um, or what started it? I, I, I know those quarter studies were real important. You know, having grown up in LaGrange, I know exactly what you're talking about. And that's why I was so pleased that y'all were going to be able to do a video to give some context to not only having the housing authority close by, the linear park, uh, the, the neighborhood that um, is going to be rehabbed. And I love the lab where the, where the students will go to school, but then go out and cross the street and actually practice the trade. So Joni, I, I, I sometimes think LaGrange is, is uh, although we're a big enough city to have a lot of resources and also have a lot of problems we're also a small enough city that we can pretty much get everybody together in one room or at least we could before covid uh we can't do that now quite in the same way but um but we do have we, we do have we are a small city and we have the ability to try to rally all these people together for a cause um but in terms of the logistics of that i'd like to to let alton speak to that because he was the one okay. who really pulled all of these various uh, groups together. Okay. Once again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, John, it wasn't, in my opinion, very difficult. I like to think that I have the gift of gab, Joni, and everybody's listening. <laughs> and I just, I, I reached out to, you know, because again, when it said innovative and partnerships, uh, my mind immediately went to our nonprofit organizations that are already doing those things in our community. Um, and then by talking and pulling those groups in is how I learned of Dale Jackson with uh, Jackson Service and what he was doing there with West Georgia Technical College. So again, I, it wasn't very difficult for me uh, to, to pull everybody together. Uh, and then we started meeting on a weekly basis, uh, just kind of outlining uh, things that we wanted to do. And I think a lot of it uh, stems back to the program that we had seen from the LaGrange Housing Authority. Chad had presented to the city of LaGrange uh, back in, as he stated, back in 2017, you know, a conceptual idea how uh, the White's Road Quarter could be transformed. So basically taking what he had already built on or laid out, and we want to build upon that just a little bit more uh, to really transform that neighborhood. So again, we're bringing those nonprofit organizations together and by talking, again, I say communication is key. And by talking, then Chad knew about Dale. Dale's, hey, look, the True County School System is very interested in this. So that's how we brought that nucleus together. And, and you see the team that you see here today, uh, West Georgia College has already been alluded to. They're very much on board as well. Uh, and then one of the things I, I did do before, you know, I, want, I did my research, made sure that we were not uh, offending anybody or stepping on anybody's toes. I reached out to the uh, West Georgia Technical College to make sure that those disciplines were not being taught in our community because the last thing that you want to do is have uh, repeat services. Uh, and they uh, assured me that they were not, but they would be on board with that. So again, it was a, a simple, I'm gonna say a simple task because the real work is, is taking place now behind the scenes. So just the communication is very, very key uh, to making sure uh, that we address what you all were looking for in the innovative grant, the creativity, the thinking outside of the box. And Joni, just to elaborate on that very briefly, uh, so even though we have today these groups represented, the school system, the housing authority, Jackson Services, these were not all of the partners right. that the city pulled together for this project. Um, West Georgia Technical College, DASH, 
um, the the very there were very a number of um, local business partners, other contractors, not just Dale and his firm. Mm -hmm. Although Dale was, if you will, sort of the leader of the pack of the businesses, but he brought a lot of other local small businesses um, to the table. And so we made sure, as Alton said, that um, that we were casting a wide net to make sure that anybody who was interested in these types of issues and this particular corridor would um, would have input and have participation and um, and a dozen or more maybe two dozen um, different partners signed mm -hmm. off on the uh, on the original um, on the original commitment if you will mm -hmm. these were just today we wanted to feature some of those that were really in, um, integral in the original planning of that project yeah oh and let me let me see if Dale if I can go to Dale for a minute uh, thank you. I, I wanted to kind of highlight something that, that Alton said, and this is something that I find is very unique to LaGrange, is unlike what maybe some local governments might do, the, the mayor and the city manager wanted to go after this grant. They handed the ball off to Alton. Alton came to us and was actually collaborative. Which, and what I mean by that, and he said it uh, quite a few times, but it's different when you you get presented an idea, a plan, and say, hey, help us implement this. But instead, what Alton and the city did was they said, this is just our starting point. We want to hear from you. How can we make this better? How can we make it bigger? How can we make it more efficient? How can we make it more innovative? And so it's one thing to try to, to bring in other groups, but if you don't listen to what they actually have to say, then you're not going to get um, you know, that, that energy behind it. And I think that was the biggest difference was that y'all actually listened to what we had to say. And it was like, it was never in question. You didn't come to us with your own idea. You came to us with a very big picture broad and said, hey, let's just run with it. Joni, it's it's hard not to listen to Dale Jackson if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's great. Well, Mayor, I was struck by how you described the program and that is, talked about the creativity and that's exactly what we were t looking for with the innovative grant. Uh, talk about bringing silos together and shared goals. But that all came across so much to us as we were reading and understanding the project. And that's one thing that uh, sometimes as a grant reader, we, we struggle with. So lesson learned. Um, what was the other thing that, oh. I unfortunately, I understand based on some of the comments that perhaps the uh, the, the video didn't show up as well. Uh, it will be online as, as all of these will be. And it, the city did such a great job putting together that audio. And I, I'm I'm sorry that you know th this is a little bit of a new platform for us this year doing the conference virtual and this is the only second session of the four day session so um but if you'll check back you'll be able to see us thank you this is a quiet group today i'm not seeing any questions is there anything else the panel would like to add i think uh dr shoemate would like to make some comments okay. yeah thank you uh Mayor and Joni, um, just to kind of allude, you know, again, I'm new, relatively new to Troop County. I've been here since July of 19. And you ask, you know, how difficult it is to pull people together. I've been involved in a lot of initiatives in my past work in different communities. And sometimes you get invited to, to a group, into a group of people who have a lot of great ideas, but there's not a lot of doers in the room or people that can make things happen. I think what happened in my, my perspective in, in my short tenure is one, relationships were already strong amongst all these people. And they brought me into the fold pretty quickly and, and, and I became a partner on many levels besides this particular project. So my first piece of advice is to, is to build relationships ahead of time in your community. Hopefully that already happened. Second is you got to find doers, people that will get things done and not just everybody's got ideas, but to actually do things is tough. And probably the third is think win, win, win. And, and I think this, that was really the case in here. You're talking about uh, better housing for, for residents. You're talking about beautification. You're talking about skills trade development and bringing in K-12 kids plus adult ed really is beneficial along with community college partners. So, you know, as you start to apply for a grant, I've done, again, been involved in some of these things. Uh, if you can if you can find the right people with the right synergy and, and where, where there's not egos or silos and also people with big picture vision 
we all have a vested interest and personal motives for, for being involved in such a project, but you also have to have people that with a broader scope of what a community should be and how you can help everybody. And people can walk away from the table, they can, everybody wins in this particular case. And I think that's what made, probably, I didn't write the grant, but I imagine it was not that hard to, to actually do because you had the right people at the table with the right kind of vision, right kind of heart for the project. And so, Joni, I, I would just make make one additional comment. You know, I, you know, I think you know I serve as uh, first vice president of GMA, and so I uh, I go to a lot of conferences. Used to be in person, now virtual, um, with with a lot of mayors from across the state. And several times um, over the past few years, we've kind of run through this exercise where you get, you know, you've got 30 mayors in the room at some type particular committee meeting. And they ask us to go and sort of rank order. What are the what are the top issues in our community? And it really doesn't matter if you're talking about uh, you know uh, you know Marietta or Lagrange, or you're talking about Americas or uh, you know uh, Valdosta. All over the all over the state, small cities, large cities, um, everybody lists the same basic issues. Everybody talks about housing. Everybody talks about jobs and workforce. Everybody talks about blight um, and, 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 and uh, entrances to the community. These issues are everywhere. So everyone has these issues. That, that's not something unique to LaGrange or any other community. What I think was, was exciting to me about this project is that it wasn't just focusing on one particular area. It wasn't just a project to develop a new, you know, new housing development and forget about the, the jobs that might be needed by the residents of those housing houses, or it might, you know, not worry about the streetscape of, uh, or the, the, the landscape. We, you mentioned the linear park, the, which, is, which is not related to this grant, but it's a, it's, a, it's a part of it. It's in conjunction with it. And so I think that what was exciting to me is you had one project that could really touch a lot of different um, areas of, uh, of interest, workforce, housing, beautification, uh, tourism, which is part of what the corridor project is is all about. So we're touching a lot of different areas with one particular project. And, and to me, that's innovative. It may have been done in other places, but it, I think it's one of the first opportunities we've had in LaGrange to do something like that. Yeah. Well, I can tell you some of our sister states that we're a part of a national organization of state agencies like DCA, and they are watching us because we tend to do out-of-the-box projects. And one of the uh, ways we put the project, the, uh, the program together, I think it was helpful is we had a pre-app stage where, where communities submitted pre-applications and we went through them and we actually accepted full applications only by invitation. So we kind of narrowed it down because we were being particularly picky about looking for innovation and not just uh, a bigger normal CDBG grant that we were looking for something that was, uh, that from our viewpoint looking outwards, what we could see would really help transform a community through use of our CDBG funds. So I don't see any questions coming in. Um, if none of the panel members um, have anything else, I won't keep you on here just to keep you on, but I do appreciate everyone who's taken the time today and I hope it's been helpful. Um, like I said, I, I think you can probably be on the lookout for us to offer another funding availability for this uh, and hope we'll get some other good projects in. And Mira and your panel, thank you so, so much. We're so appreciative. Thank you, Joni. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.